Hey guys, Wes here. In last week's episode of 5 Minute Fridays, we took a look at JavaScript's reduce function. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at two more related functions, those being map and filter. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so I've got Vim open here. So all I'm going to do is remap my F5 key to read the output of running node on this map filter.js file and then CR just to carriage return. Okay, so now when we write some JavaScript on the left side and we move to the right buffer and hit F5, we just get the output of that script here in this buffer. So it makes it kind of easy to see. All right, so in this video, we're gonna be talking about map and filter. So map is going to allow us to create some new array by calling a function against every element of some existing array. So Essentially, we'll be able to pass map some callback function that will then in turn produce each element of the new array. So we'll take a look at that and then we'll take a look at filter, which is just a method that will produce a new array with elements that pass some criteria um, given by the callback function that we pass filter. So just for the sake of example, let's say that we're running a hardware store. and at this hardware store, we sell some products, and we have those products stored in a constant array of product objects here, each of which has a name, a price, and a rating. So if we wanted to do something like just get a new array that contains the name of all of the items we have, we can do that very easily with map. So let's say we have some var names here. What we can do is we can take this products array We'll call map on it, and then we're going to pass map a callback function that operates on each element of our array here. So we got three elements, and let's just say we want to get the name of each product, so we can say p.name here. So essentially, this callback function is saying for every object p in products, return the product's name. So we can just console log names here. And so there we have an array of our product names. Note that we can really pass map any type of callback function. Of course, this is just, um, for example, just a very simple callback function. Let's say that we want to get an array of Boolean values depending on some condition of a product's rating. So I'll just comment that here. So we might use map here in quite a similar fashion. So we'll just store a var result and we'll call map on our products array of objects this time. And what we'll do is we'll only return the results where the rating of that product say is greater than four. So in this case, we're, we should return an array which has the values true, false, and false. So let's take a look at that. And so there we go. Now let's say that we wanted to take it one step further and let's say that we wanted to return a new array that had like a completely new data structure. So we'll return an array of a new type of object. And let's just say that this object would have the form of something like a name which will have the product name and whether or not that item was say on sale which will be a boolean true or false so if we wanted to construct this brand new sort of data structure given our existing array of products then we can definitely use map to do that again so let's go ahead and create a var sale products and we'll call map on products again passing it our callback function and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new array. We'll just call it y here. And we'll just say that y.name is equal to p.name, which again will be the product name. And then let's say that items that are on sale are those which have a rating of greater than 4. Okay, and then we just return y, which is the new object that we're constructing here in our map callback function. Okay, so let's take a look at that. 
So there are our sale products, and I'll just move this over a bit so we can see it. And so you can see we've used map to now construct um, an array that contains a completely new data structure. Okay, so that is sort of how we might use map with some very simple examples here. Let's take a look at filter now, which is perhaps even more straightforward. So filter is going to essentially be used to evaluate whether each item in our array meets some condition. So let's filter to see some different products by some criteria. For example, let's say that we had some definition for expensive products in our shop and we want to only return in this case those items whose price is more than some threshold value. So first I'm actually just gonna go ahead and comment out some of our earlier code. And let's define a callback function that we'll call expensive and what this will do is simply return a boolean value that corresponds to whether or not the item's price that we pass it is say greater than five. So then for instance, the expensive products would be equal to our products array. And then we can call filter and just pass it this callback function expensive. This kind of shows you a little bit about how these higher order functions work. It's nice in JavaScript that we have the ability to simply pass functions that we define here, like the expensive function here, as our callback function to filter. So now we can just console.log, and we can say something like expensive items. So there we go. So clearly we're just returning hammer here because it is the only item in our products array which satisfies the condition that its price is greater than five. So that's filter, and now let's just do a quick example of combining map and filter. So let's just create a var query here, and let's say that we wanted to get the products, which were expensive, and then simply grab their rating. So we're gonna pass map, a function that just returns each object's rating in the array that's returned by calling filter on products. And then we can console.log the result. So let's go ahead and check that out. Okay, so those are some pretty simple examples of how you might use JavaScript's map and filter methods to work with some array of objects. I hope this was helpful for you. I'll go ahead and push this little script up to my 5 Minute Friday's Git repo, so be sure to check the link in the description for that. And be sure to let me know in the comments if you guys are interested in seeing more simple JavaScript videos or really anything else that you'd be interested in covering on 5 Minute Fridays. Stay tuned for more full app videos in the weeks to come. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.